Yes, is the short answer. Um, we do know that the population of the country is getting older. Um, and for those, for many, that's fine. They've been very successful and they will, they will continue with their investments and, that, and, that, and, that's, and that's great and we support that kind of you know, success and economic prosperity. But for many people in this country, they rely on the Canada Pension Plan. I'm, I'm very proud as a Liberal that the Canada Pension Plan was created, in fact, along with universal health care, was created under a Liberal government, under Lester B. Pearson, a very important um, addition to the security of all Canadians. But we also know that as, as more and more Canadians are getting older, as the economic situation becomes more difficult for many of them, it is not enough. And so we have proposed and, and we have to be economically reasonable about this. So we've we've proposed a gradually um, a gradual increasing of the CPP benefits, the Canada Pension Plan benefits, and we've also proposed a voluntary participation element because the CPP, the Canada Pension Plan. Thanks also, I will say, to a Liberal government, it is fully funded, which is unlike the case in many many countries. The Canadian Canada Pension Plan is fully funded, thanks very much to Paul Martin and Jean Chrétien. Um, but it, we need more, and so we're proposing that it be increased, the payouts be increased, but that there also that there is a voluntary element so that people can, in fact, add even more to what is already a very good program. We're very, very proud of, of this effort to, to help pensioners and, and to help Canadians who are getting older. The short answer to your question is that yes, the CPP needs to be adjusted depending uh, according to our economic circumstances at the time. But more specifically, there are three programs that are proposed by the Conservatives that will alleviate uh, seniors. Number one is our tax-free savings account, which you all know that you can put $5,000 into it uh, each year to build up for that, uh, to, to build for your retirement. Uh, number two, we have a senior pension income splitting uh, plan that uh, the, uh, the husband and wife can split in uh, pension income, so thereby also lowering your tax burden. And then finally, uh, we, uh, as we mentioned before, there's the uh, family uh, caregiver tax credit for those uh, who have to look after their elders and so on. That will also reduce uh, the, the burden of their taxes on them. Can you clarify the tax credit? Is it only for someone who is employed? No, no, the tax credit is for anybody. Those are the specific plans, and, and, and I think that uh, those, those of us who are seniors, or those that will be seniors at some day, no, will, no, it's a long way away. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it is. Uh, we, we have put, we have helped build this country, and, and it is also uh, those of us who are in this, uh, who are Canadians, to support and respect the work that those seniors have done for us. So, should, what were you thinking? We should increase the CPP premium in order to get more uh, benefit when we retire, or and <coughs> Mr. Look, you don't. You know, what I'm saying is that we should adjust the CPP in respect to <coughs> the income conditions and inflation rates. You, you don't arbitrarily increase it. There, there needs to be adjustment but it is not a strict increase. But, but I will say that the Harper government has in fact refused to do that. The Harper government has refused to increase the Canada Pension Plan. Instead, they've proposed a, a, a completely private um, a, a completely private piece that does not in fact involve anybody who isn't able to participate in it. Um, my concern and I support that the pension income splitting which has been the, in, in place in fact for a number of years and I think an awful lot of people benefit from that. But things like the tax-free savings account all fine except for the fact that by far and away that most Canadians don't benefit from those. Those benefit those who are already wealthy or already have a significant enough income to benefit from those tax-free savings accounts. Our concern is with those who need the Canada Pension Plan, who depend on the Canada Pension Plan and who know that it is simply not enough now. And so it's those Canadians who do need that extra help. I will, I will point out that under the Harper government, in one day, the G20 in Toronto, where businesses are still suffering from the results of that, in one day, the Harper government spent a billion dollars. That is more than everything they have propo proposed for seniors for an entire year. 
I mean, the priorities are completely, completely off. I will also volunteer. We haven't talked about it yet at all. But when you have um, a, a commitment from the Harper government to spend $30 billion and counting, now we don't even know if that's the limit for stealth fighter attack jets that we're not sure are the right plane that we need. We don't know how many we need. We would never have used any. It, we, we didn't use a single fighter aircraft in Afghanistan. That's the kind of war we're fighting. We need a full foreign policy review. We need to determine how best to spend taxpayers' money. I, a liberal, want to be frugal. I want to be economically responsible. But I would rather spend the money that we have in this government from taxpayers on helping can Canadians with their, Canadi their Canada pension plan, on helping with home care, on helping those who need help, as opposed to billions of dollars on fighter jets and on U.S. style mega prisons, putting people in jail instead of investing in preventing crime and in investing in Canadian families. That's a very strong question of priorities in this election. Would you commit to indexing CPP according to inflation? Um, that's a very difficult question to answer at this point. Our proposal is to increase the payouts, but then you have to balance with CPP premiums. And so indexing, it depends on where the increases come. They may actually be more than just an indexing. So we have to, we have to balance, is the increase that we're proposing that's a gradual increase over a number of years, because we absolutely need to increase the payouts, whether it should be limited to an indexing, maybe not. Inflation is, in, inflation is not that high right now, so arguably an indexing right now would not be sufficient, and our proposed um, increases are in fact even more than that. Um, right. The Conservative plan, unlike the Liberal plan, is that one size doesn't fit all. I mean, we, we are here to propose that there is a choice. You, know, you, you could manage your own RSP. You can manage your own uh, tax free savings account. So it is for you to make that choice to determine how you want to <clears throat> prepare for your um, re retirement. Uh, with respect to self fighters, the F 18 that we're in use now is heading into their 40th year of use by the time the F 35s will be delivered. We all know that we would not put our men and women to defend our freedom using 40 year old equipment. So therefore, it is time that we look at the F-35 uh, as the next stage of uh, our um, tools that our men and women need to do to defend our, our, our freedom, and rightly so. And also, as I understand it, you know, we are, it, we're, when you talk about national defense, it is, it is a very a difficult issue in that procurement of a highly complex technology doesn't happen in a yes and no uh, open tender. It happens over a long period of time. And these, uh, as I understand, uh, when we uh, tender for mass transit systems, you know, national defense systems do take a long time. There's a lot of thought given into the life cycle cost of these equipment.